Hi, I'm Alex Grieve, better known as IB Crazy from Video Aerial Systems, and this is my Banshee 36 inch FPV airplane. The Banshee is a high speed, high maneuverability performance airplane designed specifically for obstacle dodging and obstacle course pylon racing. The forward swept wing allows the airplane to slow way down in turns and even fly in a high alpha stall, yet not tip over and crash. While this airplane is extremely durable and will survive crash after crash after crash with minimal if any damage, this is not a beginner's airplane. It is very fast and extremely maneuverable. So what comes in the kit? Of course you're going to get the foam for the airplane. You're also going to get spars for the airplane. Three of them to reinforce the fuselage, the wings, and the booms. You're also going to get full hardware, which means the control rods and the linkages for all the surfaces, and of course, plenty of glue to finish the build. Now the kit has fiberglass rods instead of carbon fiber. This is because carbon fiber is terrible for RF and because this is supposed to be a video piloted airplane, you don't want carbon fiber in the frame unless you absolutely need it. And while you might find those spars pretty flimsy, if you put them in the way I say, you will find that this is extremely stiff and it will not flex. In fact, if you spar it up the way I show you in this video, it's stronger than if you use carbon spars. Start this build by marking the location for the booms. The booms are spaced between four and one quarter and four and one half inches from the center. If you intend to use a seven inch prop like I do, then mark four and one quarter. If you intend to use an eight inch prop for added torque, please mark four and one half inches. Make these marks at the front and rear of the wing, as well as the top and the bottom. Next, we'll glue the wing together. Use a healthy amount of glue on the surfaces of the wing, but do not glue the aileron as it must move. With a healthy amount of glue on one side, press the wings together so that glue is spread to both sides. Once done, take your finger and wipe the glue along the edge. Repeat this for all portions of the wing. Once done, set the wing aside to dry and you'll push it back together once the glue is aggressively tacky. This usually takes between five and 10 minutes in most climates. This glue is a contact adhesive, so you don't need to keep it wet at all times. It will adhere quite well within half an hour of application. Next, we'll glue the fuselage. The fuselage comes in two halves with a center plug. Do not discard the center plug as these will be cut for more chambers. Move that to the side. Add a good amount of glue to all surfaces that will mate. This is the front, the center, and the rear. Be sure to add the glue on the front extra heavy as this is the only thing that will hold the airplane together. The back portion will be partially held together by the wings so you can go a little bit lighter there. Once all glued up on one side, Press the halves together and work them around a bit to spread the glue. Then separate them and spread the glue around a little bit with your finger to be all sure all surfaces are properly coated. Once done, put this fuselage to the side and you'll press it back together in about 5 to 10 minutes when the glue is aggressively tacky, similar to the wing. Now we'll prepare the tail. At the edge of the elevator slits, cut two slots along the flute so that you can remove exactly one flute from the corrugated plastic. This will create the hinge to which your elevator will flex. Be sure to cut through only one side. Do not cut through both sides, otherwise you'll need to tape the hinge together. Trim off any excess with a knife by folding it over like this and scraping with a knife. With the glue on the wing nearly dry to the touch, Align the leading edges together and then press solidly together so that you get a solid bond. Do this with both the wing centers and the ailerons. Once done, set the wing aside to fully cure. I recommend letting the wing cure for at least four hours before doing any more work with it. Do the same with the fuselage. 
line them up properly and then press together firmly being sure all surfaces are fully mated. You can work on the fuselage immediately as it can shift around a little bit. Just let the wing fully cure first. Now we'll move on to the spars. Using the wing as a jig, cut off the end of the spar so that the spar is exactly as long as the wing. Do this with two of the spars as one will go in the top and one will go to the bottom. Then move the wing and the long spar to the side. The short spar gets installed into the side of the fuselage. Using the spar as a jig, trace a line along the bottom of the fuselage as long as the spar. You want the spar to go back about a third of the way into the wing bay to secure the wing. Then taking a knife, cut a slit about an eighth of an inch deep into the fuselage. Once done, you can spread this apart with a tip of a ballpoint pen or other device. Then take a good amount of glue and inject it into the slit you just cut. Once it is filled all the way up, take your spar and press it into the slit. You want it to go down inside the foam so that it's inside the fuselage and not sticking out. This will make it the most secure. Repeat this for the other side of the fuselage as well. To prepare the wing for the spar, measure back between two and a half and three inches from the leading edge of both wing tips. Do this on both the top and the bottom. Using a straight edge along your marks, cut between one eighth and one three sixteenths of an inch deep into the foam. Do not cut all the way through the wing. In fact, you don't even want to go halfway through the wing. Once the cut is made, fill it with a good amount of adhesive. You want it to squirt out a little bit when, when the gap closes after the glue tube passes through. If the glue tube doesn't pass through nicely, you can spread it open with a ballpoint pen or similar device. Once filled with glue, install your spar. Do not, under any circumstances, run your fingers down the spar. The fibers will enter your skin and give you an itch you will have for days. Be sure the spar is embedded all the way into the foam below the surface so that it doesn't disturb the laminar flow of air over the wing. Repeat this procedure again on the bottom side of the wing. Again, do not cut halfway through the wing or it will separate, only an eighth to three sixteenths of an inch deep. Also be sure to add a good amount of glue to this slot as this is what stiffens up the wing. Although not included in the kit, laminate may be applied to the wing to increase the airplane speed and durability. I recommend using a three to five mil glossy laminate with a good amount of adhesive on it. I highly recommend letting the spar glue cure for at least eight hours before applying laminate so that it will cure properly. To laminate, start from the trailing edge of the wing and work your way up to the front edge of the wing. Use an adequate amount of pressure and a high heat iron. You don't need to use a covering iron. I find that a clothing iron works just fine. Once the top is covered, flip the wing over and cut a slice down the middle. Then fold your laminate over top and secure solidly with the securing iron. Start with the leading edge this time, working towards the trailing edge, pulling the laminate tight. Be sure not to laminate your ailerons together, otherwise they will not move. You may laminate the wings, the booms, and the fuselage all at this point if you like. The final spar is reserved for the booms. The spar should be cut into six sections eight inches long. These will get embedded in the booms and stiffen them up greatly. Using the spars as a guide, cut a 1 8 to 3 16 of an inch deep slit into the top side of the boom. The top side is the side with the curved edge that is slightly longer. Be careful not to cut too deep. This spar should extend about two to three inches into the section where the wing will join and only about half of an inch to one inch into the section that secures the tail. 
embed a good amount of glue into the section of the boom and install your spar. Again, do not run your fingers down the spar, otherwise the fibers can enter your skin. Flip the boom over and repeat the same procedure on the other side. You will do this to both booms. I'm using the tail as a straight edge, but it's probably a better idea to find something metal so that you don't damage your tail with a knife. Be sure that your knife is good and sharp, otherwise the foam will chunk and not leave a nice fine line. With both of the top spars installed, repeat this for the center of the bottom of the boom. Again, only cut between 1 8 and 3 16 of an inch deep into the foam. Again, fill with glue and embed your spar. This also should extend about 2 to 3 inches into the main wing and only about 1 half to 1 inch into the tail. The motor mount on this airplane is simply glued in place. Add a copious amount of glue to the base of the motor mount, then slide it into the back of the fuselage, work it around, and then remove it. Use your finger to move the glue around to be sure that all surfaces are coated as this is the only thing holding the motor in place. The next step is to install the aileron control horns. Using the control horn as a guide, cut two slits into the wing. Then add the securing plate to the base of the control horn. Add a little bit of glue, coating both the two tines as well as the plate to be sure that this secu is secured properly. Then press them fully into the wing so it goes through the other side. If you laminated this, you might need to cut the laminate on the other side to get it to protrude through. Take a little bit of glue and coat the surface around where the tines came through. Now take your other securing plate, slap it over top of the two exposed tines, then slide it backwards so that it locks securely in place. If the glue is ready, go ahead and reinstall the motor mount, pressing it very securely to hold it in place. Once secured, take a piece of clear packaging tape or similar tape and wrap it around the motor mount to give you a little added security. Now we'll install the wing servos. Using a marker and the servo as a guide, mark the footprint of the servo on the wing. To cut the servo bays, a knife may be used. You may cut all the way through the wing as the servo is going to be as deep as the wing is thick. In my case, I'm using a modified soldering gun with a music wire steel tip. These are fairly easy to make, and you can use anything from music wire to welding rod. These soldering guns usually only cost a few dollars and are an excellent tool to have around. The servos are simply glued in place. If you cut your servo base tight like I did, simply apply a little bit of glue to both sides of the servo and press down securely in place. This allows you to drop a knife down into the foam and remove the servo should it get damaged in a crash. I recommend using Metal Gear servos for this. Connect one clevis to your servo and the other to your control horn. Then, use this as a guide and estimate an amount of threaded rod that will fit between them securely. I'm using diagonal cutters to cut these as it seems to work fairly well. Screw the threaded rod into the clevises with the small securing rings in between. These rings slide up over the clevises to lock them in place. Adjust the length of the rod as necessary so that the aileron is flush with the wing. I am using the middle hole in the control rod to secure my arm. Using the top hole will make the plane less reactive. Using the bottom hole will make it much more reactive. The next step is to glue the wing in place. Add a good amount of glue to both the top and the bottom of the wing channel. Be sure a good amount of glue is in here as this is the only thing that secures the wing in place. Even though this is a contact adhesive, you're going to place the wing in immediately instead of waiting for the glue to dry. 
Install the wing by lifting the back of the fuselage up and sliding the wing in place. Use the glue section joiners to line up the wing to be sure it's straight. Press this in place securely and then place a weight over the top and let it dry overnight. The booms are installed by gluing them in place. Add a good amount of glue to the top and the bottom of the open section of the boom. Then slide them into place over the marks on the wings. You want the inside of the boom to align with the marks you made on the wings in the previous step. Do this to both sides. You can use the glue as a contact adhesive here by securing it in place and then removing the boom, or you can simply place a weight on it and let it dry for at least eight hours. Glue is used to secure the horizontal stabilizer to the booms of the aircraft. Use a good amount of glue and coat both the top and the bottom of the joiner on each side to be sure a good coating of glue is there as this is the only thing that holds the elevator in place. Then open these up slightly and install your tail. Once installed, press the boom slices together to spread the glue along the tail. I recommend leaving this in place and then coming back in about an hour to an hour and a half and squeezing the booms back together to be sure everything is good and sealed up. If you want to be really sure that that's in there good, also come back again in three hours and do the same thing. Be sure you don't lose the alignment of the booms on the wing. The elevator servo is simply glued in place. Add a little bit of glue to both sides of the servo, insert the servo cord through the hole in the back, and then press the servo in place. This is likely to be a very tight fit, so a lot of pressure may be required. Just be sure not to bend up the tail and install the control horn directly behind the hinge. The plate secured to the back of it will be used underneath to secure it to the part. Using a sharp screwdriver or other object, poke all the way through one of the flutes into the control rod. Then take a screw, place it all the way through the control, uh, control horn, down through the elevator, and lock it in place. Align your control horn, then take another sharp object and poke it all the way through the elevator again. Again, place a screw all the way through. Install the securing plate to the bottom side. Don't over tighten this as it will crush the elevator. Just get it good and secure. The control rod is installed similar to how it's done on the ailerons. Install the control horns into the surfaces, then use them as a guide to measure the length of threaded rod and cut. Install the control rod so that the elevator is deflected up about 1 8 inch or about four to five millimeters. The bottom hole of the control horn will make the elevator extremely responsive, where the top hole will make the elevator more docile. The tail fins are simply glued in place, but friction alone is usually more than enough to hold them in place, so if they get damaged, uh, they can be pulled off quickly and easily for replacement. The battery is used to set the center of gravity of the airplane. Install the battery into the battery bay, and then place some kind of device, either a straight rod or a screwdriver, underneath the fuselage, right where the spar comes across. The spar is the center of gravity. If the aircraft noses forward, then the aircraft is nose heavy. If it sends the nose upward, then it is tail heavy. Adjust the battery so that the, the plane balances on that rod. With the center of gravity noted, remove the battery and place it on the plug that was once in the battery chamber. Then take a marker and mark where the battery will be located. You will then cut this section out with a knife. If you're using a 2200 milliamp hour battery like I am, you will find the battery needs to go almost all the way in the front of the aircraft to get it to balance. If you're using a larger battery, such as a 3000 milliamp hour, it might be able to be moved back a little bit further. Cut this section out completely with a knife and then remove it. I'm using the rear section of this plug 
for my video transmitter. So I'll cut a little bit of this out too right here to make room for my video transmitter fit inside the fuse. To install, simply add some glue to your plug and then press it down into place into the aircraft. You do not need to use a lot of glue here. Use of a lot of glue will simply squeeze out and get all over the place. Once installed, you can run the welder adhesive along the edges. This will allow for the proper amount of glue to get inside and get that secured without getting it all over the place and all over your fingers. This photo shows how I have my video system wired up. As you can see, I used a pan camera in the front as I really like to be able to see out the side of the airplane, especially when making turns. I simply used a carpet transition strip for a stair to make a securing mount for the camera and then velcroed it in place. You can see my video transmitter installed in the section I cut out of the plug. I simply glued it in place, but you can secure it however you like. Behind the video transmitter, I cut a small section for my power filter and link board. And then behind that, I utilized the plug section cut out of the fuselage to mount my speed control. Now I'm using a 40 amp speed control in here, but a 20 to 25 amp is probably enough. This just happens to be what I had on hand. The bottom of my aircraft looks like this. As you can see, I utilized the section of the plug cut out from the fuselage to mount my receiver. I'm using 72 megahertz, but you can use whatever you'd like for control. You can also see that I ran the servo wire for the elevator down the bottom of the boom. The reason I did this is because if I use the side and I crash the airplane hard, the spinning prop will cut right through my servo lead. You can also see that I buried the wires in the foam. I simply cut and sliced down the wing with a knife and then pressed the wires into place and then taped over them. I did the same thing with my 72 MHz antenna running it all the way out to the wingtip. That's all there is to it. You're ready to fly. Go out, fly, have fun, and be sure to hit the record button when you do it.